Hey, welcome back. This is JB Free, aka Joshua Barclay, here to talk about waves and vibrations, something that is so central to our everyday lives, not just if you're a surfer, but if you use a cell phone, if you see light or hear sound, all of those are waves, and this is our first entree into the whole concept of waves. We are starting off with mechanical waves. So let's start off with a couple simple definitions. In order to have waves, you have to have what are called vibrations. A vibration is a disturbance that repeats regularly in the same space, such as any back and forth motion or state about an equilibrium position or state. What that means is you could have a uh, you know a speaker that goes, here's the equilibrium position, goes back and forth and back and forth and back and forth uh, about that equilibrium position or state. Or you could have a sound like this, la, and what's happening there is it's going, uh, the pressure is going from atmospheric pressure to a little above atmospheric pressure, to a little below atmospheric pressure, to a little above atmospheric pressure right here in front of my mouth. So uh, that is another example of a vibration. Uh, in that case, it's going back and forth about the equilibrium uh, state, the pressure state. The equilibrium point is often at the middle or midpoint between two extremes of the object's motion or state. Uh, for example, the equilibrium point for uh, this sound wave is atmospheric pressure. If I have a pendulum going back and forth, the equilibrium point is just the middle right there. A periodic motion like that of a pendulum is an example of this, of a vibration. Next, we talk about simple harmonic motion. Now, that some of us have seen before, but that's a specific pattern of vibration caused by a restoring force, which is oppositely directed and proportional to the magnitude of the displacement. Uh, in other words, if you have a spring moving back and forth, if you pull the spring that way, it wants to pull you back that way. If you pull the spring that way, it wants to pull you back that way. It's oppositely directed yet proportional, meaning you double the displacement, you double the restoring force. Uh, examples are a small amplitude pendulum and a mass on a spring. A wave, which is always caused by some kind of vibration, is, dis is a disturbance that travels through a medium transporting energy, which is the ability to do work, and blank, which is the ability to exert impulse. What's that? That's momentum. So it, this wave will always transmit energy and momentum, but it doesn't transport matter. When you have a wave moving from one place to another, there's actually no matter moving from one place to another. Uh, in other words, if when I speak here and it's picked up on the microphone, which is down here, there's no molecules of air that are actually traveling from here down to the microphone down there. Uh, what's happening is there is a disturbance that is traveling, but no molecules of air. Uh, next concept is the idea of the period. Now, we may have seen this before. I uh, probably have. The period, we use the symbol capital T. And it is the amount of time required to go through one complete cycle. That, of course, is measured in the SI system in seconds. Let's see if we can get some of these uh, concepts of what a period is. A period, the period of a second hand on a clock. What's that? Now you need to have a, uh, an analog clock for to be able to understand this, but look at a clock and see if you can determine what the period of the second hand is. Well, it is one minute. Why? Because it takes a full minute for that second hand to get around. The second hand goes around in one minute. The period of the minute hand, what's that going to be? That is, of course, going to be one hour. Now, we could convert these to seconds if we want, uh, but we don't need to for this, for this conceptual uh, exercise. What is the period of the hour hand? Now, you might think to yourself, oh, it's got to be 24 hours. It is not 24 hours. 
Uh, notice that there's only 12 numbers on a clock face. So the period of the hour hand, it does get around in 12 hours. How about this? The period of the Earth's rotation. That, of course, is the time it takes the Earth to spin around once like that, all the way around on its axis. What's that? That is, in fact, 24 hours. It takes one day for the Earth to do that. Next concept is frequency. Now, the concept of frequency is, uh, first of all, we symbolize that with a lowercase f. Uh, in chemistry, sometimes they will use the Greek letter nu for that. Um, physics, we're going to use f. That is the number of cycles per unit time. It can also be the number of rotations per unit time, but a rotation or a revolution is also a cycle. So it is measured in cycles per second. Or simply per second. You could say just one over seconds. Because uh, cycles are a non-unit. You just say, okay, how many somethings per second? Uh, or just per second is uh, units, which we have renamed Hertz after Heinrich Hertz. And because that's a name of someone, we capitalize that. And we use capital H with a lowercase z uh, as a symbol for that. Uh, in other words, 2 Hertz means 2 complete cycles per second. Now, the equation for frequency, which is a really good one to memorize, is this. The frequency is 1 over the period. Now, notice we use capital T for period. It is a time, but it's a very specific time. So don't use a lowercase t for period. It's an uppercase t. It's 1 over the period for the frequency. Uh, the flashing fluorescents uh, that light this room, uh, if you're in a room in the uh, school, they turn on and off at the frequency of what? Now, you might say, Oh, well, I know the, uh, the frequency of the outlet and our electrical system is 60 hertz, but the fact is that these flashing fluorescents uh, go on when it reaches the top positive voltage max, and they also, then they turn off, then they also go on when they reach the negative voltage max, and then they go off again. So it turns out to be 120 hertz. 120 times per second, they turn on and off. The frequency of the second hand on a clock. Now that is a little bit harder unless you look at this equation right there. Then you'll know that, well, we already figured out the period is 1 minute or 60 seconds. So the frequency is 1 60th hertz. That means it goes through 1 60th of a cycle per second. It only goes to the, just to the 1 second mark moves one second every second. Uh, so that means that it does 1 60th of a full cycle per second. Uh, and then what we're going to do right now is we're going to find the frequency of this demonstration pendulum that I'm going to set up right now. So when you're timing a pendulum, uh, there's a couple things you need to consider. And this is a pendulum simulation from the phet.colorado.edu website. And it does a really good job of simulating pendula and does uh, some things that we can't do, like take it to Jupiter, the moon, or uh, take it to deep space. Uh, but this will give us an idea of what we got to consider. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to displace this pendulum. One thing you have to consider when playing with pendulums is that a pendulum is only simple harmonic motion if it's at a very, very low amplitude. In fact, it really is truly simple harmonic motion only if it's an infinitesimal amplitude. Uh, in other words, an infinitesimal distance away from this point uh, right here. So this amplitude right now is 9 degrees, 10 degrees, and for reasons that we're not going to talk about in honors, but we'll talk about in uh, AP, uh, you really got to keep it at 15 degrees or less uh, to have it be close enough to simple harmonic motion uh, for us to be able to count it. Now, the next question is, uh, where do you start timing? So you might say, okay, I'm going to go to the extreme. I'm going to start there, and I'm going to end there. Now, a couple problems with that. What is a whole cycle of this thing? If you start when it's right where my arrow tip is right there, 
Where do you end it? When it's also right there. How about this? Because uh, that's a full cycle. Some people might say, okay, I want to start it. Uh, I want to start counting when it's at the middle. So if I start, boom, there, uh, question is, where would you have to end it? Do you start there and stop there? Start there, stop there? No, that's not true at all because notice if you start on the way to the right and you stop it on the way to the left, that too is not a full cycle. For a full cycle, you'd have to start when it's there and stop when it's right there. In other words, you need to be going to the right crossing this line. So the basic question though is, do we want to uh, have this starting here at the extreme or do we want to start counting when it's right there? Well, there's advantages to both. Uh, it's easier to see when it hits the extreme, but it's moving the slowest out here. In fact, it stops. So that can be cause inaccuracies because it's spending so much time out here. If you start it and stop it when it's at the equilibrium point, well, it's moving the fastest past the equilibrium point. So that's got some uh, advantages. It doesn't spend much time there, but you have to be able to mark that really well so you know where the equilibrium point is. Luckily, this simulation has a dotted line there, so it's easy to tell when it's there. Another thing you want to do is, would it be a good idea to just count one full cycle like this and start and stop? No, that wouldn't be a good idea. We want to get as much timing in as we can. Typically what we do is we time 10 cycles. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start it uh, at 15 degrees. I'm going to bring over this, this uh, clock right here and I'm actually going to change the, uh, uh, change the length of our pendulum, getting it as short as we can. And I'm actually going to go to Jupiter uh, where uh, gravity is a lot greater and it's going to have a lot greater acceleration and speed. Uh, so we can get uh, kind of an interesting number here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to start it when it crosses that line and I'm going to stop it when it crosses that line a tenth time. Now, you got to be careful. Uh, I've seen a lot of students do this. They start and they go, ready, three, two, one, one, two. They start counting at one. That's the wrong thing to do. You want to start counting at zero. So let's try that right now. Three, two, one, zero, one two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, stop. And what I did was I started it and stopped it when it was crossing that line going to the right. I got 8.74 seconds for 10 cycles. So what is the period of that? What's the period? Well, let's figure that out. So now that we have 10 times the period, 10t, being 8.74 seconds, it's very easy to figure out the period. That's one of the reasons we use 10 cycles, just because it's so easy to divide by 10 and get one period is 0 0.874 seconds. Then to find the frequency, it's quite simple. All we gotta do is use our equation that relates the frequency and the period, get out our calculator, and we just do one divided by 0.874 and we get 1.14 units are hertz 1.14 hertz and what that means is that our pendulum does 1 and 14 hundredths of a cycle every second every second that goes by that pendulum did 1.14 cycles